people get black tags just for somebody to buy a funeral cloth? We tend to push people towards all the things that bring extra stress on a human being. It's more like inmates. You know what's up? You just support your home, something small, before you realize it's a full time job. Hello and welcome to Honey IC. My name is Noeli and I'm a black IC. Today we're talking about black tax. I know, what does that mean? When I told my guests and when I asked a lot of people, they did not know what black tax was, but in reality, they are being black taxed. Now let me give you a bit of a background and then the definition. Now black tax is a term that originated in South Africa for money that black professionals provide to their family every month outside of their own living expenses, usually out of obligation. It is caused by continued economic imbalance that can be traced back to apartheid and slavery. Now that's in South Africa. Let me bring it down to Ghana. What it literally means is when the duty of an Africa, there's the duty for an African child to support their extended family and elderly parents financially, they are to educate their siblings building family homes and funding family business. Chester, anything that involves you, whether a first, second child, wherever you fall, you taking care of your siblings, your family, whether it's an obligation, whether it's explicitly mentioned, whether it is impliedly mentioned, you are doing it, you are being black tasked. Now I have two of my favorite people in the studio to discuss this all important <laughs> Topic. My first guest is Ajiman Kukudia, a Hello. phenomenal photographer, and my girl for days. <laughs> I know, Ines. She's a nurse, an accomplished one for that matter. But maybe we'll bring her on that on the show another time to get into some medical situation. But today, she's going to tell us how she be, she's been blacked us. Now, let me start with you guys. When I mentioned the phrase black tax did it ring any bells to you to like explain it to you oh yeah it's actually rang a bell because it's something mm -hmm. i've known for a while now. oh so and you knew like, that you oh, yes, yes. and it's <coughs> something i think i've even written on before okay or maybe i found writing on right and yeah. Ines, have you ever heard of the phrase i haven't okay so when you first mentioned it like i think for a moment i had other things on my mind right. that mm -hmm. That's what it could probably mean. Me. And then later we discussed it and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this thing that has been really irritating me my whole adult life. That's you really have the chance to talk to about it now. So. so this is like a therapeutic session for her. Okay, so she's about, we're about to go in. Now I want to give you some scenarios. I, I am not necessarily being black tax i am a beneficiary no. of a black tax i mean i live with my brother rent is on him bills are on him i take care of some things but then because he's my big brother even though my i still have parents he's been quote unquote taxed to taking care of that responsibility i don't know if that conversation was explicitly had with him or he just assumed the rule we also have different forms where there there's a, a lady or a guy who marries into a family and then he's now responsible for taking care of the wife or the husbands um the like their siblings and even some even extend to external families so your uncle your aunties now let, let's get what i want to know is that with you at what age did did this start like did you start being were you told let's start from there i think um anybody who actually consciously remembers when they started paying black tax hasn't really paid black, <laughs> black tax because it's it, it's more like innate okay it just happens before you realize oh um you know something just support your home something small before you realize it's a full-time job mm. that's yeah that's how it started for, me. for you so i can't really really um you know point a period maybe my early 20s Jeez. okay so yeah. then let's set the scenario you finished school you started no, working actually i think i was even while well, i was not in school um, really you know, sometimes you just want to support a letter so support my letter. that was you deciding that you were supporting a little i miss well i took mm -hmm. off some of um, the burden for my family because um when i was going when i was in high school i was still doing business on the side so okay. sometimes i go to school they don't hear from me mm -hmm. then vacation i come back so maybe um my siblings sorts me out. I also benefited from black tax when I was in 
high school because I went to my only school and my cousin was in Hope Poly. Okay. So he was close by. So it's so. like, we'll get into the generational differences <laughs> from there. So, so you, I feel better <laughs> from, from that. that and so. then, so I guess for you, it wasn't really an issue because like, okay, I am a beneficiary of exactly. the black test, so I, I need to continue. Oh, yeah. I need to, you're rolling your eyes. What? <laughs> Okay. When did you, when, like, when did it start for you? Like, was there a conversation that was had or it just happened? You also started supporting and then so it turned it into a thing. The whole time he was asking you, I was just smiling and thinking that mm -hmm. he, he was saying if you've ever really had a conversation, then you've not really been black. If you can remember. You can remember. This, yeah. But I, I think that these things are like very silent communication that happens whilst you grow. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to tell you that, oh, we are doing this for you to come back and give back to society. <laughs> so they're like, <laughs> but it just happens. Mm -hmm. It just happens because it's silent things that happen. But you see, yeah. first, you, you benefit from the black tax yourself. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be like fiscal cash. Okay. It could be clothes handed over for, to you from like older cousins mm -hmm. older siblings mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. and then you get black tax to take care of yourself uh -huh. so by the time i was in nursing school at a point i realized that there are certain subtle things my mom would do and it, it's telling me young lady where you are getting to some yeah. things are there you shouldn't even be coming home to be asking me mm. so by the time you are finishing school you realize that i'm on my own <laughs> like it's get, it is it is coming and it is doing so I have to start <laughs> yeah, 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 leveling yeah, yeah. up exactly mm. and that happens then you now the third phase of that is to get black tax to now give back to other people so you were giving mm -hmm. then you started giving yourself yes, now so you are giving other people yes. so okay. over time the expectation is that you start taking the burden of your parents mm. and then it starts mounting on you well for yourself initially then for other people if you have other siblings all the worst because <laughs> i mean if, if you had only child that that's i yeah, don't know whether yeah. it, it makes it easier or it, it makes it worse because mm -hmm. i've experienced like both, both sides like mm -hmm. i have friends who have who are only mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and it's because they are like the only one so everything that, about the parents is on, on them. them now let's get into it you know one of these things about this black test, and I asked before we go on the show, why do you think that we are our parents' like backup plan? I need start. You? <laughs> yes. Y yes. How? Yes. A big yes. <laughs> well, that also depends on the kind of family or background you are coming, coming from. from. Yeah. Now, I, I feel like our parents sold themselves out for us, literally. Okay. Depending on the, the level of income they had okay. available to them. Mm -hmm. If you fall into the low middle income group mm -hmm. where there's no generational wealth yeah. to fall on and your parents kind of live from paycheck to, to paycheck, paycheck, they give up so many things just to let their kids have something, mm -hmm. at least get education. And, you know, the expectation is once they give you education, at least till you finish university, you get a job and then they can start like cooling off. And you realize that most parents would probably build their first house close to pension. Yeah. And you, you realize that your parents can drive one rickety car their whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. Or some may never even get a car oh. their whole lifetime just because the kids need to be comfortable. Yeah. And once that happens, the expectation is that, oh, I'm investing in these kids mm -hmm. so that when I grow old and my energy cannot sustain me they in the can. work life anymore, they can mm -hmm. take up that responsibility mm -hmm. and hold me up. Another problem too is with our pension systems. Yeah. Then I want us to wait and get into <laughs> the government because that's the whole conversation. <laughs> now, <laughs> Greg, okay, do sure. you do you, what do you think of what she's saying? Like, are we the backup plan for our children apart from the pension? I, that's I think the um, there was a time where this <laughs> conversation was actually flying all over social media where mm -hmm. people made their point that they are not their parents' backup Back plan <laughs> and they compared us to count, some countries like. Canada and the oh, US. Please. But you know what we fail to realize is that um in the US, for instance, right after high school, most people tend to take up jobs. Mm -hmm. Um they take themselves through university yeah. and college. Mm -hmm. So um down here, some people are their parents' responsibility, even into their late um their you know, early thirties, mid thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Um some people are done with school, their parents pay their tuition, pay hostel, mm -hmm. pay for everything mm -hmm. through school, 
They come out of school, no jobs. They are still at home. Yeah, eating, they, eating from they are their getting mom's monthly stipends. So, yeah. so your parents feel that they've Sometimes actually made an they investment. Marry for them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you, you see, your parents feel they've actually made an investment into your life. Mm-hmm. Um, those monies, like tuition, university tuition is quite expensive. Yes, it is. So those monies could have actually gone into their pension. But no, those monies have actually gone into you. So yeah. they feel that, okay, because they've given to you, it's only, um, you know, fair. natural or only fair mm-hmm. that you extend that curtsy. Back to them. So, yes. So, people throwing the whole narrative that we are not parents back up. Yeah. Um, ideally, we shouldn't be. Ideally, yes. But the circumstances are actually very different from what What's the reality? Exactly. The reality So, is. yes. Um, if uh, my parents contributed nothing, right after high school, mm-hmm. I got a job, took, my, took care of myself, took student loans, which is um, absent here, mm-hmm. took student loans, um everything then yeah it's only natural and only um you know reasonable that, that um i'm actually my all my money actually go to me and not to my parents and not pay back black tax mm. now let's get a bit deeper into the conversation what what toll does this black tax take on you i've heard perspectives from married people i have seen black tax taking a toll on a marriage of someone that i know because like i said they married someone, then the person has more money, then the family realized that, oh, you've brought you've caught a big fish. Actually, it's an advice <laughs> I give a lady that when you're going to get married, make sure that you marry someone who is rich, like can actually come exactly, out the, the family that of yeah. Exactly. It'll be like make sure you catch a big fish. Mm-hmm, now we've mm-hmm. caught the big fish, they were eating the fish, they're eating the fish. The fish started complaining that ah, <laughs> why are you people eating me? Now you guys are single, so I wanna ask, and but then you're still doing this so you will each take me through what a typical your your typical situation like. How does this black tax um, take a toll on you as a young person? So you, who and who and who are you supporting? Your parents, your siblings. How does it work? So um, well, how does it? Where so do like, I is it go? like if I'm your sister, I just call like, oh, can I have some money? Or does she go to your parents and they send yeah, her my back? My sister to... called me yesterday asking me for money. She's in school. <laughs> she actually called. She goes like, oh, okay, so I'm broke. I want money. I like um, call your father. I'm not your father. She was like, "No, I'm calling you." And you know uh, the thing is that this uh, thing has like you feel um, empathy because you know that okay, maybe your parents are going through tough times, uh-huh. so you actually want to assist and all that. I remember one time I went to do a job in Cape Coast, mm-hmm. and unfortunately um, for me, the clients paid seventy percent. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they know it, but once you get money, the calls come in. Like, just right when the money Your got into my people. account, my sister called me and she wanted exactly what I got. Like, if you call me, she wants 3K. I'm like, how do you know I have 3K? Like, I just got 3K to my account. How do you know? And, you know, um, it's actually a dire, it was a dire situation. Mm. So I had to just shut up and just you send money really to her. Yeah. And you know, How did that make you feel? Um... <laughs> I was annoying initially because, like, you know, you have plans. Yeah. You have plans. Okay, so That's the toll I'm this, talking about. Um, like, how does that uh, take a toll on you? Well, when you're actually um, building yourself up, it takes you take um, two steps forward and one step back. Yeah. Because you've made plans. Okay, I want to get this equipment. I want to get this for work. Mm-hmm. And um, something that you haven't planned for comes in. So yeah. you just have to suspend your plan. And then they tax, no? Exactly. That's what makes it annoying. Then we, you actually have to try and find other alternatives mm-hmm. to fit into something that you've already budgeted for, something that you've planned for. You know Ooh. that this money is coming from this side. So it's it's it, it can get very tired. Very tired. Very, very tired. I we we'll let him take a break and come up with more things that he can remember. <laughs> and then... Oh, no, there's always <laughs> more. more there's thing. always So now, Ines, you, who and who are you taking your siblings, parents? Mom, okay, so for me, siblings check, Uh but um, I always say that I'm very grateful for the mom that I have. Okay, she always knows how to make something out of anything. Yeah, shout out to all the mommies, (laughs) especially the Ewe mommies, like they've been crying. (laughs) All all she needs to do is to tell me, Oh, if I can, if she gets this money and she does this, and any amount of money you give to her, like she she multiplies it and mm. that stuff. So at the end of the day, my mom is not the what kind that I need to regularly sort her out. Okay. okay. But this is the interesting side. Uh-huh. My kid brother calls me and he's like, Oh, I need money. And when I called mom, she said, I should call my sister. <laughs> and I said, 
I'm not your only sister. Why am I the one but you're calling? calling? But I think that nowadays there's no formula to the whole black tax thing. It yes. doesn't matter whether you're first, second, third, mm -hmm. last born. Mm -hmm. You just need to be earning something yes. and show a sense of responsibility. And then yeah. people would come at you every time. Mm -hmm. I don't even really have an issue with my immediate family that much. Do you like I do with extended? my extended family. Yeah. Okay. Like sometimes, these are people who I never even be benefited from. They are black tax, but they directly. now think that directly. Because, directly. Because, because indirectly you benefit them, maybe. Because well, we are very, 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 very conscious of <laughs> my my growth pattern and my family. So you know their lies, yes. And you know where all the money came yeah. from. So but there's how no people implied. just feel like, oh, yeah, in a, you're in the big I, city. I'm her uncle, and like she she's is. in a crash. She's working. You know how people say stuff. Maybe they meet you. They're like, oh, she's a big girl. I hear what things. And, they just get that. They don't. It's just the title. They don't mm -hmm. even know how much you earn yeah. based on your Manager. title. Manager. Once you go home, everybody is expecting exactly. something. That is the part that is draining. Mm -hmm. Now, the toll that it has on me as a young person, I I think I've, I read too many books growing up <laughs> and I had too many fantasies in my head of what the, the things I wanted to do for myself, how yes. I wanted to build my life. Yes, she wants to travel a lot. Like, <laughs> that is key. Yeah. But this yeah. black tax, I know black it's time. eating into the traveling fund, right? Yeah, this black tax kind of like, Sometimes I even see the nice things I want for myself and yeah. I have to forfeit them yeah. just to be able to sort like the family mm -hmm. out. My kid brother, I took him up as my personal responsibility. Oh, uh, assistant parents. I think <laughs> right <laughs> after nursing school, nobody told me because the, the the space between my kid brother and I is quite wide, like 13 years. Oh, so he wow. was yes, like my like first baby. born <laughs> and I just took up. I didn't even know at the time what I was signing up for mm -hmm. because I took up fees and you told, like, you told it was cute. And so, <laughs> the, 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 the thing is not that easy. Sometimes he's in the uni now and sometimes I pay his fees and I have to like further my education so I'm paying my own fees and he's asking for extra money and I'm just, And you're looking at him like, like I have a life, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> I have money packed up by some wall that when you call it. <laughs> So those, those are some of the things. It delays your progress. Yeah, it yes. Does. If you are not very, very like firm, mm. you may never get anywhere. Yeah. And for me, I also set some targets for myself before I settle down. Like financially, mm. I want to be very financially independent, independent and stable. In, not like on the extreme end, but at mm. least let yeah. me walk into that marriage like knowing I'm cushioned. Yeah. So then, those yeah, things yeah, close, kind then of you have to be very brutal. Those mm -hmm. things kind of make me have to sometimes work extra hard. Yeah. Sometimes do two jobs, add extra things on the side just to like be Ensure able to that level up. Income. So it's it's, very, it's a lot very because like mm -hmm. you're saying, you're both saying sometimes. So instead of just having a regular one job, you're making your money, you're taking care of yourself, saving for your future. Now I have to take three jobs because I have like a legion of people in the back. Mm -hmm. Who are just waiting for payday exactly. so that they can get they can get some money out of me. Is there any advantage of being black tax? Like and I say a disadvantage is so well. Yeah. Like do you think that it builds you up? Because I think that what it makes you does it make you more financially sound and disciplined, taking that responsibility at a younger age, as compared to other people your age whose Finances are all over the place because so they are not no. taking care of anybody. No, there's no I don't, there's I don't, no advantage. No, no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any advantage. You don't see it. No, no, no. no it's no. all disadvantaged. Oh, yeah, because um, it's your money. However, you want to spend it, <laughs> like it's up to you. So um, I don't see how someone actually taking money from you mm -hmm. is um, it's an advantage. <laughs> money that you have, like something that you haven't planned for. Yeah, it's very spontaneous. Mm. Like someone like maybe my mom or my dad's car. Like, okay, so the mechanic said this is like, dude, it's your car. Why should I be paying for it? Like, yeah, so I need this. And, um, you know, sometimes, like you said, you have to be firm. And sometimes, yeah. because they are your family, yeah. you can't say no to them. Yeah. But fortunately for me, I don't experience any external pressure. Yeah. Because um, today, my dad still thinks I'm unemployed. When people ask him, tell them I'm not employed because I'm a photographer, and, you know. Um, as long as I'm, I don't belong in a corporate, a corporate space, I'm unemployed, and yeah. that's fine with me. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are so <laughs> <tight>. Exactly. <laughs> you, that's a good excuse. But you see, unlike and that can also come off as unfair because even though I am quote unquote unemployed, I still take care of your daughter that calls me and asks me for something. How do you think that those bills <laughs> are being exactly. taken care of, exactly. right? I mean, well, I just want to say I, something. I think you're asking if there are any advantages or like we think it's only disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Well, there I should think be some good sides of some. It. There is mm -hmm. some advantage to this. Mm -hmm. Really, like, for me, I think, like I said, you don't get to have a formal conversation around this thing. It just happens. Mm -hmm. And having seen the pattern as I was growing up, mm -hmm. by the time I started work as a young nurse, I think it made me already have my finances in place. Like, I knew all these things would come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I it also made me know that if I want to give myself the good things of life and also balance up on that side, then I need to work extra harder. So I think it gave me more yeah. maturity financially yeah. than work my, ethic. my other friends who yeah. didn't have some mm -hmm. of these things. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were also being blacked out, but they didn't put their mind to it to plan exactly around it. Maybe yeah. they didn't like life like me. <laughs> so oh, they, yeah. They couldn't she, be bothered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that makes me sick mm -hmm. is to wake up and feel I don't have money. Like, I don't have anything yeah. saved up. That depresses like, me. I would just say, <laughs> but <laughs> wanting to have that cushion and still do those things kind of made mm -hmm. me a bit to read more, yeah. get a lot of financial literacy for myself, mm -hmm. see how best I could, and also plan yeah. so that I could put a stop to this whole thing in the future Moving which forward. will go now you were talking about the pension so we're about to come into this <laughs> into the whole like who do we blame for this predicament i mean we'll say society as a whole but then i want us to break it down our parents are our parents to be blamed for this some way somehow did they like fail us because if you are going to have a child it's your responsibility i believe that children are not assets they are liabilities they come into your life they take 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 should they have planned better like is it their fault that we are paying for their other children when they are the ones supposed to pay for their children okay if, if i can go first <laughs> uh, i think that it's it's a a big problem mm, it's like, a predicament yes society is playing its role mm. the family system is playing its role and but it, it, it all is like this big umbrella of a societal problem then it, it tippers so, down yeah. to the individuals if you ask me i feel like our society glorifies suffering yeah because we tend to push people towards all the things that bring extra stress on a human being yeah. example marriage childbirth those are life-changing things but you see that they keep pushing us into those and then the things. number of children you and should the have the number of children the way you have one and society is asking when the next is coming mm -hmm. then you have the second and they're asking for the third. third like but the point really is that mm -hmm. it's so ironic that in the other part of town where these people have like this social oh, support intervention, and interventions yeah. and they have free medical aid and good pensions they don't even push people towards that angle so the whole societal issue is there oh finish school get a job get married have kids have a lot of them <laughs> that is what fulfills you <laughs> that, like, and re replenish the end what and would the people on the end with an interesting phrase they tell you uh -uh. like it's god that takes care of kids I'm like, is not the days of anymore. mana falling are over. <laughs> no, so my, my line of work has exposed me to so much yeah. of the burden that the number of kids or even having one kid places on women a family, women. woman, the man, and all the extra responsibilities that come with it. So we have the societal problem. We have our political problems of how our pension systems work. Works. and So the fact that we don't things. have governmental or social interventions to help with these exactly. things is a problem. Uh, I think um, mm -hmm. one thing that we are actually failing to um, acknowledge is um, the family system. Mm -hmm. You know, um, our society, African society, we are mostly communal. Yeah. But there's, th there's this um, um, quick shift from communal to um, individualistic. 
Okay. So um, back then, it used to be communal. Some uncles can even offer to take the burden of a certain family, so they'll just pick someone to take care of them and mm -hmm. all that. But now all that has shifted. So, so we are now individualistic, but the effect of being communal is still lingering around. So okay. that's why some extended family members still feel that they are obl like they feel that they can actually ask you, you for yeah. something mm -hmm. because of that communal spirit. Maybe their care. uncle took care of your father. Exactly. So, so like it's, it, it's as your father's child, part. you should take care of their yes. kids. Yes. I um, there's that. that they have that um, you know, they feel that, that sense of be entitlement. Able, uh, that, I wouldn't call it entitlement. You'll be surprised. They'll be well, texting you like it will come. Like your uncle will call you. I'm like, why are you calling me? I'm not even your child. Like okay, your let, let's let's meet at the middle ground. Half entitlement. Half <laughs> so <laughs> that yeah. half entitlement that they have mm -hmm. towards you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, well, it's it's actually um, based on um, the our we, structure. Sure, it's, yeah. it's logical. Absolutely. Exactly. And let's talk about like should gov should we be ha like like you said outside there's social welfare, mm -hmm. there's student loans, loans yeah. there is help that is coming. We're going to deep dive into that. What we think that the government can do, or how we ourselves should manage this issue. We're going for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Mama, senior. Boss, I'm here. Let me do that thing. Welcome back from the commercial break, and we've been talking about black tax. A situation where you, as a young person, married or single, are expected to take care of your family members, both nuclear and extended. And I've been having the conversation with Ajiman Kwekudia Jr. and my girl. I need mm. well so before we went on the break right you guys had told us me everything that like how the situation is going now I want to um let's talk about how can we can help the our viewers who are watching or experiencing this black test how can they politely say no <laughs> or sometimes what are the tricks that you use when somebody calls you out of a blue a sibling a parent an auntie how do you say, sorry, I cannot help you at this moment? <laughs> what do you do? Well, you just, um, well, I think mm -hmm. you crush what you are bringing with an overwhelming <laughs> problem. You just, so, you just make them understand that their situation is actually less, less than what you're It's a baby and do it. Exactly. Because, well, you've actually helped in the past. So mm -hmm. that would be some form of um, consolation. So are there, ex uh, like, do you have a situation where they are recurring ones? Like, it's not like once in a while, but like, you know, once a month, there's some particular person that is calling to ask for something all the time. And you know, for me, my fear and my experience with some of these things have been, you do it once, once yeah. and then you they come again. And then now I'm thinking, should I put you on a retainer or something? Like, should I, in my budget oh, you can for, the, do that. Wow. for the month, should I keep you because you keep coming? So, I mean, he said, come up with an overwhelming story that send them, like... They'll even have sympathy for you. For Maybe you? they might even <laughs> want to, send you to actually <laughs> just send you something. Well, for me, I, I think, want that. What do you think? Do you use? It depends on where it is coming Maybe from. from who's like I said, I don't really have a problem with my immediate family like that one because over time, I, apart from my kid brother who is still in school, my other siblings, we tend to like sort each other out as and when is necessary. Okay. And then we all come together to sort our parents out as and when is okay. We try to cushion each other. Okay. So for them, I don't really have a problem when I'm giving something out yeah. to any of them. It's It's okay. But when it comes to like the extended family, mm -hmm. that sometimes I, I just say out and I'll try no. And once I say that, it takes a long time before the person can gather courage to come, come back, back again. again. And I also sometimes try to prioritize what the issue is. Mm -hmm. Like my uncle's daughter, who, who happens to be, that's supposed to be my niece, right? Yes. 
or whatever, I don't even know which yeah, country. Yeah, like they call that. me that she's not well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because I'm in healthcare, I tend to assess the situation and realize that, okay, this is a health problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big. And for me not to be taken advantage of, I try to say, okay, I'll take care of the medications. And I know how to get the exact medications without you over budget or overprice the items for me. Mm. But if I feel like you're just taking advantage because you think I have money sitting there, mm. sometimes I just say an outright no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I tell you my kid brother is my full responsibility. So you should just understand. I think she um she actually brought my attention to something. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I actually prioritize the problem. Is it like threatening? Yeah, somebody if it's not dying. Like men, if no, somebody's not dying, then okay, we can put some food. <laughs> I'll see um, you next yes, month. Yes. Okay. But if it's, yeah, then that one, like, at least for me, I tend to prioritize the living more than the dead. So, yeah, exactly. Um, I was I'll just about to say that people get too. black tax just for somebody to buy a funeral cloth. No, for that one, no. <laughs> for um, funeral contributions, no. No. If you cannot bury the person without my money, that's your problem. Yeah. Now, another thing that I also want to is there a way you budget like now let's like do you now that you know we all agree you are being black tax one way or the other now i know that i put away some part of my money for a b c d e f g h in your personal budget is there a budget for this tax <laughs> well i budget for the ones that I, I can't I can't do anything about so maybe like uh, like my kid brother's fees I know he'll pay his fees every year mm -hmm. I don't have a choice I would have to pay his fees and hostel fees and yes I I plan for that okay. so he doesn't take me by, by surprise. surprise but the other things are that you leave some money on the side for certain emergencies it could be personal they could mm -hmm. come from family yeah. and once it's sitting there and those things come up. You can help in the little yeah. way you can. So are you saying that that's how you also end up saving for yourself? Like once you have a plan, yes. it's easier for you it's to sort easier. settle those things and also be able to save towards your future because yes. you're yet to get married. You have kids. You can't spend all your income taking care of other people. Yes. Because that way, mm -hmm. I'm able to know that if it is a thousand CDs I'm putting aside for miscellaneous, once it's exhausted, that's it. Somebody that's can it. swallow car battery. <laughs> we don't. I really don't. Care. Like that's what I'm done. That's a bad idea. Do not swallow car battery. <laughs> I would just say, <laughs> how are you saving for yourself in this black tax thing? And do you budget for these things for like for your saving? I, I used to um, factor black tax into my entertainment or miscellaneous. Entertainment. Budget. But now there's no budget. Like there's nothing as a budget. So um, you know, some some can like some can really be really really surprised, uh, mm -hmm. and um, it's so dire that you can't ignore. Mm. So sometimes you even have to dip your money, your hand into your savings. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. So that's when uh, that's what um, I said. Um, you take two steps forward and one step mm -hmm. backwards. Yeah. Now I think we should. I, I want us to reel it in before we leave. How do we break this cycle? You got it, experienced it. Now you are paying for it. The hope is that your brother sorts it, like gets through school, gets a job. And how do we make sure that he doesn't end up taking care of your kids? When your kid now becomes like, my mom said she took care of you when you were in school. <laughs> so now, uncle, you have to take care of me. And he's thinking, but I have my own kids. Like, how do we break this cycle? First, what can we do? And then maybe if a government official, maybe the president or whatever is scrolling through and sees our show. He wants to inculcate some of the things that we'll tell him. So let's start with personally, because I feel that at the end of the day, the personal responsibility lies with us. Yeah. And I would say with the parents, stop having kids you cannot afford. You, 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 you look at your income. You cannot have five children. You need to use your head if you are earning a certain income have a number of kids that you can afford that's what's going to come but sometimes i think you know the whole idea behind have kids i can afford nothing is certain someone has a job okay maybe um pay their income they are they can be able to take off three kids so they're going for two kids mm -hmm. then something like COVID happens and then what happens yeah they get laid off their 
work mm -hmm. and um, they lose some people lose their uh, source of livelihood and all that so um initially they thought they could even take off yeah but then you see what if he didn't think about that and had five kids he would have been worse off oh yes good so let's start with you Ines. <laughs> how do we break this cycle yeah so i totally agree with what you said mm -hmm. first of all we need to plan our families we need to have kids that we can afford very, very comfortably. Mm. So that in the event that you even lose your source of livelihood, mm -hmm. you may still have some backup funds to keep you afloat so you find something new. Yes. Now, when we say we are planning the families, it's not even just about the size of the family. Mm. It's also about the spacing of these kids. Yes. Because if they are too close, it means that you, you the pressure becomes higher. Okay. And... If Ideally, you, what should be the age as a medical professional? All well, the medicine will tell you at least two years. So okay. at least two years. Okay. But it could be more yeah. years than that. And once you do that, you realize that you don't have like at one point so much pressure. Like you have one child in GSS one, one in GSS two, one in GSS three. <laughs> yeah, that was me <laughs> and my siblings. <laughs> and you don't even know. Like you, you just have to deny yourself everything so for these kids too. Mm -hmm. You even end up making these kids very uncomfortable. Like, do you feel like, I mean, not to catch you, is there like a sense of resentment that you think that can come out from there sometimes? Like, I gave you all these things. Yeah, that's how come they were beating us for not Best getting first in school. And because they feel that is the only, like, Thank consolation you. they get from everything they do for you. Mm -hmm. So you should also bring home something. And that is how the black tax thing, they start taxing your brain. So then, okay. I think so it really reminded me of something. So, uh, one time, my brother came back, like my youngest brother came back with his results. I was like, dude, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, after, after all the money, we are paying like, for you. I remember when I was in school. Something and like that. I wasn't that. really bothered about, like, you know, yeah, well, I just call uh, something good and okay. Then my dad goes like, uh, you could actually you could have scored a hundred, and I don't understand why I should score, score like, when I can actually score say um ninety five or a ninety and it's still. But you a, realize like, that it all still comes mm -hmm. down to the family dynamics where once you are too many, yeah, the the pressure is there. The yeah, parents don't even pressure. give you that much attention yeah, that you yeah, need to yeah, even be true. doing. Well, they just keep shouting that <laughs> do well in school. They are not even taking their time to teach you homework, give you extra classes, the things that will make you better. You realize that somebody's one child or two kids is better than somebody's 10 children yeah. combined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you plan the family and the size is cute and you are comfortable, yeah. you're able to give the children the best and still save for your pension. Yeah. Aside what government is doing, that is not really the best for all of us. Mm -hmm. So you save, maybe by the time those kids are even leaving home, you've even built their first houses for yeah. them. You've given them their first car. Yeah. So they are starting life on a level ground mm -hmm. and don't have to like, struggle with other yeah. kids too so it gives them that mental so piece of if we all can do this you realize that in two three four generations this whole black tax okay. everybody will be okay. okay even if you end up in the middle income range you you realize realize that, oh, it's you okay if from. i have one child if yeah. that is what i can take care of yeah, yeah. but another thing too is you know mm -hmm. the funny uh, black tax is actually quite an interesting um, phenomenon yeah. for instance you know, you're in a family um you know, like in order to actually pull out the family, mm -hmm. pull up the family, you know, make sure everybody's okay, mm -hmm. you have to actually chip in some black tax. Yes. Sort out your siblings yes. so that in the near future, yeah, they also can level. become independent. Exactly. But then again, that will also to take a toll on you. Yeah. There's always somebody <laughs> ha that has to make the sacrifice together yes. because I'm sure if we trace back the line of all the generational wealthy people, people ha who have multi billion dollar companies that their sons and grandchildren becomes CEO of one person had to dig the ground. Yeah. And if that I'm sure that guy is in the grave thinking like in, in some I instances did, they didn't even have kids. Exactly. They, like they some, had to some sacrifice. Some That's what I was just about to say that Aram, mm -hmm. look at all those rich people like in other parts of the world mm -hmm. that we hear about. Yeah. You actually don't even have so many kids. Yeah. It's only in a part of the world that once you're rich People think that you should impregnate 10 women and have 22 <laughs> kids. Like, that is yeah. that is what it That's is. Unless you're going to use them to plow a farm, you don't need 22. Like, I, I, have, <laughs> I know somebody whose father, at the time when senior high school, like, was doing very well for himself, but he had 17 kids. So, and today, my friend feels like their father could have done better for them, yeah. so they wouldn't have been struggling right now. All of that 
wealth he had just went down the drain yeah, because well. there was so much pressure. So the farm, the planning, the family, and mm -hmm. being comfortable in our little space is very, very key. Because if I have a child and I'm comfortable, mm -hmm. and you have two and you are comfortable, I don't think I'll come and be black taxing you yeah. to help me with my kids. Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. it really boils so down to any the family final words system. before we go. Hmm. <laughs> I think the whole um, first kid being assistant parents, then... Um, we are, I apologize <laughs> on behalf of your parents and to all the first bonds that are suffering this. <laughs> well, well, she actually made a point that now it actually goes beyond the just being a first child mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. once um, you, the one who is financially well-to-do becomes the, um, yeah. um, of, you know, object or subject of um, yeah. black tax. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for coming to this studio. It's I was so excited to do this with you. Like we said, plan in your family. You are your own government. The government of the people for the people. You are the government. So the main way we can break this cycle is to plan our family so that we can give our children, their children's children, a better life. And so I come your way same time next week. I want to say a big thank you to my crew. This has been Honey Ice Tea. And I'll see you. Bye.